So here we have your pretty basic STI setup. It's a, what we would call a stage two. We've got a parent intake, we have a turbo back exhaust, we have fuel injector upgrades and a fuel pump upgrade. Can't really see those. Down there in the hole, there is actually an equal link header on this car and it has a blow up valve. Now the customer recently had to rebuild the engine and we gotta wonder why. What failed, what caused the failure on this car? Any guesses before we dig into it? Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Uh, sorry about the long hiatus. I've just had a lot going on. Um, I moved out of Portland, couldn't have left soon enough. It is really, uh, well, it's an interesting place. Uh, but that aside, politics, whatever, we're talking about cars here on our Taco Tech Tip Tuesday. So as I just showed you, we have a stage two STI and it had some kind of engine failure. Um, we want to figure out why the engine failed because contrary to what people believe, Subarus don't just fail. The engines aren't that fragile. We make, you know, we have race cars making over a thousand horsepower that go out time and time again and make hit after hit after hit and don't fail. So what is it that causes these engines to fail? Well, that's what we're going to dive into in this video and hopefully you learn something. So we've got our data logger going here. Um, this car is being tuned through open source tools. So we have the data logger with a bunch of various parameters. Uh, because we're probably going to be doing some diagnostic on this, uh, my expectation is this won't be a full pull. So we're just, we've got it strapped down to the dyno and we're going to see what happens here. of that pole we only went out to about 4400 rpms as you can see the boost was just shy of 10 pounds that's why the power is real low i'm not too worried about horsepower right now what we want to look at is this line here which is air fuel ratio coming into boost we were actually still at 14.72 and the, the richest it got before i lifted was 13.54 now this should have been quite a bit richer but how much richer you know our tune targets could actually be pretty close to that i'll tell you they're not but they could be. So we're gonna open up our data logger here. So I know there's a lot of squiggly lines here, but what we're looking at in this column here, we have air fuel corrections, learning the AF sensor and the final fueling. This is really important because it's what we're actually targeting. So if you look at the green line, it's pretty close to what we were. This is the onboard sensor, which isn't very accurate, but it's at least gonna tell us something. You can see it's still reading 14.7. Our actual target at that moment was 12.69. So you can see it's definitely not close. And again, when we get up to our, our, our highest RPM we ran, our target was 11.6. Our actual was 12.98, which is, like I said, this doesn't read very accurate to what we see out the tailpipe. Um, the onboard sensor on Subarus is not designed for reading in boost, but irrelevant to the fact that it's not even close to its target. Our target was 11.6. If we go back to our dyno plot, we were at 13.54. Well. I know that this car was tuned previously and ran fine and we didn't change anything on it but the engine itself. Everything attached to it is the same. So there's something wrong there for sure. Some reason why it's running super lean. My inclination first off would be the mass airflow meter itself. The easiest way in my experience is just to throw another one in. So that's what we're going to do. Now this is pretty much the world's easiest install. We have an OEM Denso MAF here. Um, 197-6040. They do look just a hair different as the top just it's real hard to see it just says 604 and this one's got all the Subaru writing but this is the OEM math so we're just going to unplug basic Phillips head screwdriver a really long-winded screw. Try not to drop these. They're really hard to get the right screw. Jeez. One. I 
don't know who sourced these, but they are way too long. <laughs> but they whatever, they fit. New math into hole. Kind of put it in sideways and twist it back in. It's the easiest way to get it in the right spot. You gotta make sure the o-ring falls in the hole. Plug it in, good to go. Now we're down 1072 uh, where it was 1354 previously. So all we did was change the mass airflow meter. And we went from a motor that was going to run lean and mean and hot and probably what blew it up. Um, I guess the engine, it was a built motor before. It actually had the rings butt on one of the cylinders, which from running lean and hot could definitely cause that. It was obviously running more than 10 pounds of boost then, uh, probably 19, 20 pounds of boost and super lean not going to have a good time. So now I'm going to finish tuning this. Uh, now that we have fixed the issue, now it's time to get to tune in. Yay! So that's my tech tip for today. Make sure that you address the actual problem, not just fix all the symptoms. This engine having, or this car having a failed motor was a symptom, not the problem. People think they put a new motor in, it's just gonna run fine. That's not the case. Something caused the engine to fail. And that's what we've determined. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish the tune on this car. And uh, you know, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more videos. I'm hopefully gonna get probably around one a month for a while until I can get kind of back into the swing of doing them. Um, and in the meantime, uh, enjoy listening to some glorious Subaru noises while I tune this car. Thanks for watching. Bye.